Hi everybody, my name is Anastasia Dvorak, I'm your Calgary Lifestyle Guide. Welcome back. I'm a local real estate agent and a blogger, and today we're talking about renting in Calgary. How to rent an apartment, how to rent a house, how to do it quickly, easy, and stress-free, what to write in your application, how to write it, what not to write, and all the other little things you have to consider in order to be chosen to be the best applicant for the dream property of your choice. Let's get started. Renting is a challenge right now. There are so many different properties that are being rented out. The demand is quite high. The competition is intense. Landlords are not looking at every single application. They're only looking at the ones that give the good first impression. Let's make sure that your application stands out in a good way. Stay until the very end because I'll be discussing all the tips you need to follow in order to get the best rental of your dreams. What not to write at your application, what to write, and what other things you need to consider. Let's get started. Tip number one, if you want to find a rental, you will have to do it yourself. Or if you want to find a rental, please don't talk to a realtor. Yes, I know, I know the way it sounds, but guys, I get so many questions every single week and people ask me, can you help me with a rental? And I unfortunately cannot help you with a rental. In Alberta, realtors typically do not handle rentals. I know some realtors handle it in Ontario. I know some realtors handle it in Europe. But typically in Alberta, it would be very hard to find a realtor who handles rentals. Typically, realtors need to have a property management license if they want to handle rentals. Sometimes for certain tasks that they handle, they need to have that license. And if they do not have it and somebody finds out, they can get fined and they can lose their license. So I do not have that particular license and not many realtors in Calgary actually do possess a property management license. Not many realtors are motivated to find a rental and you will ask me why. And there are many reasons why I actually talk about them in my article. It may not be profitable for a realtor. It may take too much time. Realtors are typically focused on buying and selling real estate, so they're not interested in helping you find a rental. And I know you'll rent for one year or whatever, and then you'll go with that realtor. But you know, for some of them, their main line of business is buying and selling. They just don't have the time and motivation sometimes to find people rentals. The income that they get from rentals is very, very small. And the fees that we have, it's basically the income is unable to support their business. So a lot of people, do not work with rentals and also some of them do not have the property management license and if you do find a realtor who is able to help you they will charge you a one month rental fee as their minimum and it may be even more it depends on the realtor but i personally do not know any realtor in calgary who handles rentals so i am sorry guys I cannot help you find a rental, but I made this video so I can help you find a rental. This is this comprehensive guide. We will learn everything you need to learn, and I believe in you, I know you can do it. Let's just follow the steps, okay? So step number two. What are the rental costs you need to pay for? Here, I will be discussing all the costs that you need to consider, and there are a lot of costs that you never even heard of, and that's why I think it's important that you listen to this particular part really carefully. Number one, refundable deposit. So you will get this deposit refunded at the end of your lease term, which is typically six months to a year. Right now it's typically one year. So you will get that deposit refunded if you've kept the property in good shape. I am not talking about wear and tear. I'm talking about the things like you did not damage the carpet. The carpet is still relatively clean. You did not damage the walls. Basically, you didn't do any substantial damage, you respected the property, and that's when you will get your deposit back. The second thing we consider is the first rental payment of the month. Sometimes landlords require additional payments. That happens if you have no credit history, if you're a brand new immigrant, or if you're a refugee, if you have absolutely zero history, if you have no references, and nobody knows who you are, you have absolutely no background in Canada, then they may consider that you need to pay them first month's rent, second month's rent, and the last month's of rent. I know it's a lot, but that's what happens. A lot of property management companies actually require four payments up front. So that would be the deposit and then three additional payments. First month of rent, second month of rent, and the last month of rent. So it is 
pricey, but sometimes that's what happens. And I need you to be prepared for that. The third thing that we need to consider is utilities. So utilities sometimes can be included in the rental and you will actually see it in the ad. It will say, let's say if you're looking for an apartment, it will say heat and water are included. But that means that electricity is not included. And electricity is typically about $50 if you're renting an apartment. And sometimes the landlord does not include any utilities. And that means that you have to pay for heat, which is gas, you have to pay for water and you have to pay for electricity. And that is approximately $200 that you have to account for. That's 200 bucks that you have to put towards utilities, okay? If you are renting a house, a duplex, or a townhouse, you will typically have to cover all of the utilities. Yes, there is some rental ads that actually include utilities, which is amazing and very generous, but most of the time, guys, you will have to cover the utilities. The cost of the utilities is roughly $200 to $350 a month for a property under 1,500 square feet. And it's about $450 to $700 a month for a property that's over 1,500 square feet. So it's for a large house. So it would be about $450 in the summer months, but make sure not to use air conditioner too much, okay? Otherwise the cost goes up. And it will be roughly about $700 a month for the winter months, but that's when it's super cold. That's when you pay a lot. The next thing we need to consider is internet. And there are lots of different providers and you can choose the one that works for you. Average cost is about 65 to $89. And I'm not talking about cable TV, I'm just talking about internet. So definitely we need internet in our life. So I recommend using companies like Shaw, Telus, and there are a couple of others that you can use, but do your research, okay? The next thing we need to consider is moving in fees. And those are the fees that are applicable to situations when you're renting an apartment. Typically, there are no move-in fees when you're renting a townhouse, a duplex, or a house. What that means is that you will be booking an elevator in an apartment building and you need to pay $150 to $200 to the property management company to schedule this move. So yes, it costs a bit, but you have to pay for that. And if you're trying to not pay for that and do it illegally by just doing it, ignoring the rules and just pushing your couch in the elevator, um, don't do that guys. There's security recording available. There are neighbors who will report you and then you'll have to pay a fine that could be, you know, from 500 to $1,000. I, I don't even know how much it would be. So please, if you do want to move in and you need to use the elevator, please schedule your move. Do not start this relationship on a bad note. You do need to schedule it. You do need to pay 200 bucks because then the property management company will actually put the protective covers in the elevator and then you can move your furniture and no one's gonna bother you. You'll have a time slot to move all your stuff and it will be done, okay? So the landlord will not be in trouble and you will not be in trouble. So please follow the rules, guys. The next item that we need to talk about is rental insurance. And rental insurance is very, very important. I know not a lot of people have it, but I highly recommend it. It only costs about, you know, 15 to 20 to $30 a month, but it will cover you in case of a liability. And let me describe you the typical situation. For example, I know it will not happen to you, but let me talk about it. Uh, there are some landlords who require it and some landlords do not require it, but I honestly, I really recommend it. And here's why. Let's pretend in this crazy scenario that you're taking a bath and you forgot to turn it off and the bath water overflowed and basically there is a little flood and the water seeped through and it's already you know, covering the ceiling of the unit below you. And that's a really bad situation. So there's a water damage. And when there comes to any kind of damage in the condo building, the deductible is usually about $50,000, okay? So what that means is that the landlord comes in, sees there's a damage or somebody reports you and basically you have to pay $50,000, yes. And if you don't have it, then the landlord will sue you or put a lien on you you will have legal problems, you'll have problems, okay? This is situation number one, you need to protect yourself, okay? So rental insurance is very important. And landlords, you also need to protect yourself. That's why I insist on having rental insurance. 
For all my clients who ever want to rent, guys, my advice is get rental insurance or make sure your tenant gets that rental insurance, okay? It's super important. And usually it is the responsibility of a renter to get that insurance, okay? So another situation. So there's actually one case in Legacy, I'm not gonna mention the building, but there was one building where there was a sprinkler malfunctioning. So what happened is that the whole floor got flooded and there were, I think, I don't know, 80 to 100 families that were displaced. So they had nowhere to live, all their stuff was damaged. People who did not have rental insurance, they had to you know, live with their family, they had to rent a hotel. People who had rental insurance actually had their hotel paid for, their meals paid for, they were protected, they were covered by that insurance. And I know it is an act of God and it's really rare that it can actually happen to you, but it can happen. And I've seen the damage on TV and it's really bad. Like all of their stuff, was just it's dead it's gone it's it's garbage and if you have that rental insurance then the rental insurance would actually reimburse you for all the damaged stuff okay so rental insurance is super important these are the providers at the bottom that i recommend you can go with any provider of your choice and you can compare rates with all kinds of providers but please seriously consider rental insurance the next thing we need to consider is pet costs First of all, not every single landlord will accept a pet, no matter how cute or adorable your dog or cat is. I know it is sad, and that's why when you go on rent faster, for example, make sure you filter the properties that only accept pets or cats or dogs. Some properties do not accept them at all, so what's the point of looking at them, right? So only choose the properties that accept pets. Sometimes there is a weight limit when it comes to your dog, there is no weight limit for cats. There is a weight limit for your dog if you're renting an apartment. Most apartments have a weight limit of 30 pounds and they also require a maximum of one dog or one, or one cat. So you can have two animals, but it can be either two cats, two dogs, or one cat or one dog, and that's it. If you have three, you don't qualify. Also, if you have a small pet like a hamster or a bunny, I would definitely disclose that to the landlord and see if they could accept them but not all of them do and that is a fact okay and also if you do have a pet you might have to pay extra fee for it per month so it can be roughly from extra 50 to 100 dollars per pet per month yes and that depends on the landlord but again if you are looking for an apartment building be aware that there might be a weight limit restriction if you're renting a house or a townhouse or a duplex usually there are no restrictions in terms of weight okay so definitely talk to your landlord and figure out if there are any restrictions the next topic we need to discover is three scenarios these are the typical scenarios that i always hear about i wanted to discuss those scenarios with you because i think they're very important and i'm not going to memorize them i'm just going to read my notes let's talk about mary so mary is looking to rent an apartment her budget is $16.50 per month, and she has a full-time permanent position, and she will need to pay for electricity and internet. So we're looking at a potential property in Legacy. It's $16.50 per month, and she needs to pay for internet and for electricity, and she will be paying for the following things. She will be paying $16.50. It will be a refundable deposit. It will be refundable at the end of her lease if she keeps the place clean. Then she'll pay for the first month of rent, that's $16.50. Then she'll pay for the utilities, $50 roughly for electricity. And she will need to register the utility under her name. Then $70 for internet. Moving in fee to move her couch and her bed will be $150 that she'll pay to the property management company. Or she will pay that fee to the landlord and then the landlord will pay to the property management company. $20 rental insurance per month and online credit check. So sometimes landlords pay for it, sometimes they don't. If they require credit check, you can just pull it from creditkarma.ca for free. You can give them your credit report if you're comfortable. You can give them your credit score. Uh, for some of them, it's more than enough, but it depends on the landlord. Sometimes the landlord actually pay for the credit check themselves and they will look at your credit, but you have to give them consent to do that. So. The total costs for Mary prior to moving in are $3,590 and 
yeah, these are the costs before even moving in. So remember, there's some additional costs you have to pay for before you actually move into your apartment. And that's very important to know because a lot of people don't consider that additional cost when they're looking for an apartment. So if you need to adjust your budget, adjust it. And let's look at her monthly costs. So Mary moved in and she's enjoying her apartment. Here's what she's paying per month. Rent, $16.50. Electricity, $50. Internet, $70. And rental insurance, $20. She had to provide the following documents with her application. A short biography about her and who would be living in the unit. In this example, she's living alone. Her reference is from her previous landlord. Her job offer confirmation of her position from the HR of the company she works for. Her credit score, if she has it, and she can pull it from creditkarma.ca or borrowwell.com for free. So after her application was accepted and the landlord is ready to sign the lease with her, she had to read the lease. And lease is basically a rental agreement that discusses the details of her one year lease with a landlord. And it's very, very important that you read that lease very carefully, okay? Mary had to buy rental insurance, yes. And the companies such as Square One, TD Insurance, Insurly, and others, they offer all of those options. Mary had to set up her utilities. She had to book an elevator in advance with a property management company and she had to pay the fee for that. And landlord and Mary went through the moving inspection report together. And if your landlord is not doing that, then you should definitely take pictures of the apartment and you need to send that email with those pictures before you move in. It will be a proof that you did not damage the apartment. It is the way it is, the way it was before you moved in and this is your actual proof. If you don't take pictures and there's some damage, the landlord will be like, that's, that's your fault, you did it. But no, you didn't do it because you have proof, you have pictures, okay? So Mary took pictures of the unit to make sure all the defects were documented and not attributed to her stay in the apartment after one year. The landlord may or may not take photos at the same time. They may not because they already have pictures at, at home. Some of them take professional pictures. They may have pictures, but sometimes they go and take pictures again. She emailed Mary. She emailed all the pictures to the landlord before moving into the apartment and save that email as she will refer back to it in one year to compare the state of her apartment then and one year later. So that's super important. Don't forget to do that. So there are a couple of important notes, okay? If Mary is unemployed and she's looking for work and she has no credit score, she has no experience, she has no credit rating and she's simply very brand new to Canada, she will need to pay the initial deposit the first month of rent, second month of rent, and even the last month of rent. And that's a lot. That's four payments up front, but don't get depressed. Not all landlords require this. Some of them are fine with three payments, okay? The refundable deposit, the first month, and the last month. Some of the landlords also require a bank statement showing that you have enough funds in your account. And feel free to, you know, scratch away with a marker or whatever, hide your personal information, hide your bank account number. They don't need to know that. They just need to know you have enough money in there in your account. That's all they care about, okay? And not all landlords require this, as we all know this. However, if, for example, Mary has no job or her credit score is bad, the landlord needs to see some sort of proof that there is some sort of funds available to cover the rent payment, okay? So some of them we've mentioned check the credit rating, but some do not. And some of them also require a bank statement from the country of origin. So for example, if Mary's from Dubai, she might have all the money in her Dubai account. She will have to show the funds in from her Dubai bank. But again, not all landlords are so advanced. Some of the landlords don't even know anything about this, but I need you to know about this, okay? So you're prepared. Some of them may require an abstract of their credit score from their uh, country of origin. But again, not all landlords require this. Now let's talk about the second scenario. This is a new immigrant slash refugee scenario, okay? So we have Natasha and Alexei from Ukraine are coming with their son and daughter. They have no credit score. They don't know anybody in Canada. They have no landlord history. They have no job. They have some savings, but not a lot. And they have a subsidy from the government. 
and they need to find a rental as soon as possible. They've never been here before. They're starting from zero with minimal English and minimal savings. And they're unemployed, but they're very eager to find a job. And they need to find an affordable apartment. And they found something on RentFaster for $1,500 a month, but they need to cover the electricity. Heat and water are already included in the rental. And we learned that electricity is roughly about $50 per month. And let's look at the costs that they need to cover. So they will need to cover the $1,500 refundable deposit. It is refundable at the end of their lease if they keep the place clean and free of damages. $1,500 first month of rent, $1,500 for the second month of rent, and $1,500 last month of rent. Why? You will ask me why, and I will say this. They're unemployed. They don't have any history. They, they don't have, they, they don't even have a credit score. It's basically at zero because they're so brand new. They do have a government subsidy, but not all landlords feel comfortable taking people that have just escaped the war that come with nothing. A lot of landlords have anxiety about things like that. And I understand them, but I also understand people in difficult situations. That's why I'm making this video because I want you guys to find that rental. This excessive deposit and rent payment situation is only applicable to property management companies. Most landlords do not require four payments up front. Okay, so calm down, it's gonna be okay. Sometimes they require it, but sometimes they do not. Sometimes they want you to pay as far as, as, far as in advance as you can, okay? But you're legally not required to do it, okay? But sometimes they will require the deposit the first month and the last month. That's three payments. Sometimes they require four. And you can always say no and say you're not comfortable. Find another place. You know, they're not the only property available. Try to find something else. And considering you will learn how to make your application more attractive, you still have good chances of securing that rental. So don't get too discouraged. What happened to Natasha and Alexia? Let's continue. They need proof of funds. So the bank statement showing they have funds, but of course they need to remove all the personal and private information. Just scratch it out with a Sharpie and just take a picture of it and send it to the landlord. Then utilities, $50 for electricity, $70 for internet, and the moving fee is $150 and the $20 rental insurance. And let's summarize the costs for Natasha and Alexi. So it would be $6,290 prior to moving in, that's quite a bit. And once they're settled in their new home, this is what they're paying per month. $1,500 monthly rental fee, $50 per month for electricity, $70 per month for the internet, and $20 a month for rental insurance. And in total, it's $1,640 a month that they're paying for, okay? This is their scenario. Let's talk about the last scenario right now, renting a house. So Mary and John have expanded their family and they're now interested in renting a 19 square foot house in Evergreen Southwest. And it's currently being rented out for 2,500 a month. So they're both employed and it's January and it's quite cold. So here are the costs that they need to pay for. $2,500 first month of rent, $700 per month as it's in the middle of winter. And this is what they need to pay for. And they need to pay for water, sewage, gas, and electricity. So as I mentioned before, the cost of utilities is $200 to $350 per month for a house under 1,500 square feet. And anything over 1,500 square feet will be about $450 to $700 per month for a house over 1,500 square feet. Okay, $450 per month in the summer months, but please don't overuse your air conditioner. And $700 per month in the cold winter months. Then there's $70 fee for the internet. And then there are no moving in costs because there's no move-in costs for detached houses, semi-detached houses, which means duplexes and townhouses because there are no elevators. And rental insurance is highly recommended and may be required by the landlord. This time the landlord did not make them purchase rental insurance and Mary and John understand that if their belongings burnt down during a fire, they will not be able to get reimbursement from the landlord and will most likely have to live with their parents or family members as the landlord will not pay for their hotel stay or temporary accommodations. They're willing to take this risk as they know that in the worst case scenario, they can move in with their parents or rent an Airbnb for three weeks. And they know they can avoid these costs if they had rental insurance. But you know, Mary and Jonna, they're willing to take this risk. That's their choice too. I always recommend rental insurance, but 
Some people, they don't want it. That's cool too. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Total cost for Mary and John prior to moving in is $5,770. And once they're living here and enjoying this house, here's what they're paying per month. It's $2,500 monthly rental fee, $700 for utilities as it's in the middle of winter. And if it was summer, it would be paying around $350, $400 per month. They pay $70 for the internet. And the total monthly cost for the month of January, cold winter, is $3,270. And the total monthly cost for month of July, warm summer, is $2,920. So you can see there's definitely a difference in this cost because utilities definitely have a major effect on your expenses. We've covered these scenarios. I hope they were useful and I hope that you can use them for your own personal scenario. What are the top rental sites in Calgary that can help you find a rental? I will show you a list on the screen right now, but I'll give you my top three websites. The first one is my favorite. It's called rentfaster.ca. It is a wonderful website where a lot of people find great rentals. I highly recommend it. I love their system where you can filter different things. It helps me with my analysis when it comes to buying properties for clients. And I absolutely love how easy it is to use that website. So rentfaster.ca. Number two is Facebook Marketplace, but you need to have an active and appropriate Facebook profile. And number three is Kijiji.ca rental section. So there's a room rental section and there's a property section. So definitely check all these websites out and see which one is your favorite one. The next topic we will discuss is getting familiar with rental rates in Calgary. This information that I'll be providing is of January, 2023, okay? For the most updated rental rate in Calgary, you can click on the link in the description and you will be taken to rent faster and you can look at the recent statistics. Right now, as of January, 2023, we're looking at the following. If you're looking for one bedroom apartment, we're looking at $1,300 to $1,500 per month. Two bedroom apartment is $1,700 per month to $1,950 per month. Townhouses, $1,750 per month to $2,000 per month. Houses with detached garages, $1,850 per month to $2,200 and more. And I've seen houses that are $3,000 per month, but I'm looking at average. I'm looking at affordable houses you can afford. I mean, there are houses there that are very expensive. I'm just looking at kind of the most affordable level that is available right now. I'm not looking at the dirt cheap houses. I'm looking at this general affordable area, okay? And I'm also not looking at the most expensive houses on the market. Houses with attached garages, $2,200 per month to $2,800 a month. Let's talk about the next point that's very, very important. Treat your rental search as if you're looking for a job. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Treat it as if you're looking for a job. And when you're searching for a job, you take it seriously. So use an email address that is appropriate. So let's say marysmith at gmail.com, you know, johnsmith at gmail.com. Do not use like cutiepie36 at gmail.com. Don't use anything that you use it when you were younger. Okay, don't use anything inappropriate. Just try to keep it professional because all those things, they matter. I know it sounds really strange, but landlords look at the little things too. In addition to an appropriate email address, make sure that in all of your communications, you present yourself as a professional, polite person. First impressions matter. The way you present yourself, the clothes you wear when you view the apartment for the first time, everything matters. When you dress nicely as if you're looking for a job, when you have a proper email address, when you use please and thank you and regards, when you use all those elements, people look at you differently. You know, you stand out from a pool of applicants because you're not the same. You're not like them. And not everyone's rude and disrespectful, but I'm just saying because there's so much competition, you need to put your best foot forward. Make sure you Google yourself and see which social media profiles show up. If there's a picture of you getting drunk with your friends or you know there's some inappropriate pictures that are on Facebook, I would recommend blocking your profile for a while, hide it from the social media. Just nobody needs to see your private life, but at the same time, you don't need to overshare. So always Google yourself and see what happens when 
somebody Googles your name, just try to present yourself in the most appropriate manner because they will 100% Google your name. I can guarantee you that they will. The next topic we'll discuss, and by the way, there's a lot of sun on my face, so I'm just gonna try to move to the left. You need to send as many rental applications as you can, but you must keep track of them. So set up an Excel spreadsheet, start tracking your applications, write down the address, write everything down because you need to pay attention Okay, to what you're applying for because when the landlord sees that you don't even remember which property you applied for, it just looks really tacky, okay? Just don't do that. Keep track of your applications. It's also very important to read the description and read the requirements that the landlord wants because I'm telling you guys, 80% of people do not read the description on Rent Faster. They just ignore it, they just apply. And that's a mistake. You have to understand that the landlord needs to know that you actually read his description. He or she spent hours writing, or you never know. You know, some people are very particular about the descriptions. Sometimes they mention certain elements. For example, uh, cells facing sunny backyard with a view. So you, in your application, you say, oh, we really appreciated this uh, beautiful sunny backyard with a view or some sort of element or the beautiful kitchen uh, with a granite countertops or you know some sort of detail that stands out that is very particular to that rental ad and we're not talking about generic things we want this landlord to be like hey i read your ad i mentioned it in my application i actually pay attention i will pay rent on time most people are too lazy to mention things like that. They just do generic copy and paste and they move on and don't be that person because the landlords, they don't like it, okay? I talk to landlords all the time. I've done a lot of research to write this article. So please guys, pay attention to what they want in the description and mention it in your application. Number 10 is actually really important and it talks about not lying in your application. You need to disclose how many people will live with you in this rental apartment, and you need to disclose how many pets you have, and you cannot hide that information. You cannot bring a pet later on or bring another kid later on. That just is a no-no. It is very, very important to disclose all the information because otherwise the landlord can move you out because you're breaking the lease, you were being dishonest, and you need to avoid that because you've done so much work, lying on your application is not an option. The reason why you need to specify how many people will live in this property is because there are actually national occupation restrictions for people living in, uh, let's say, apartment building. According to the national occupancy standard, children under five years old, either of the same gender or the opposite gender may share bedroom, okay? Children under 18 years old of the same gender can share a bedroom. A child five to 17 years old should not share a bedroom with a child under five of the opposite gender. Any other household member over 18 years old needs to have a separate bedroom and a person can share a bedroom with their spouse or a common law partner. So for example, you are married and you have two kids. One kid is 18 and the other kid's five, okay? So what does that mean? That means that you will need a three bedroom property. One room for you and your spouse, one room for your 18 year old child or a young adult, and then the other rooms for the five year old kid because there's a rule that anybody over 18 needs to have their own room. You cannot put 18 year old and a five year old in the same room, you can't. So it is very, very important that you calculate how many rooms you need so that you're not breaking the national occupancy standard because this stuff is important for landlords and they will notice. And I don't want you to get evicted because you lied. When you're being honest and transparent, that builds trust with the landlord. So he's more willing to accept, you know, certain things about you that are not perfect, but you need to be upfront. You cannot lie about it. And now let's talk about the next topic. Content is everything. Great first impressions do count. So please make sure to check your spelling, make sure to check your grammar, make sure you use the proper email address and make sure that you attach a photo of your family. There's a link here, it's called snipboard.io and you can actually attach a picture of your family and if you go onto the website, it will explain to you how to do it. But you can basically put this link in your application and it will take this person, potential landlord, 
onto a special website where they can view your family photo. So that also makes you stand out because usually we don't really see applicants' faces unless we do some research. So the landlord typically does not even know what you look like. So if you can stand out in any way, that would be a good idea to do if you're comfortable doing that, if you have a nice family picture and if you're okay with them seeing your picture, then go ahead and do that. That will definitely make you stand out. The other thing is that if you have a certain degree or if you have a PhD or master's or you know, some honorary degree or postgraduate degree or some specific training that is unique or you're, you're chef in France or whatever, you know, something unique about you, please mention it in your application because it will make you stand out. Also, it will make you seem mature, trustworthy and reliable. I know it's very stereotypical, but you know, it, it works, okay? So please try to think about what are the ways that can make you stand out. Don't lie about yourself, but still think about it. Focus on the content. Focus on what the landlord wants you to write about. They don't want a sob story. They don't want a sad, long story with your problems. They don't care. It's harsh, but they don't care. They just want you to pay rent on time and be a normal tenant without breaking their stuff. So you have to make sure that you have that good, positive first impression. The next one is quite controversial, but I personally do not think that you need to mention that you are a new immigrant or refugee in the first email to the landlord. You can mention it later when you talk to them, but I don't think you need to mention it immediately because some landlords don't like it and they will immediately eliminate you and I want you to have a chance at this. So you can mention it later. You don't have to mention that you're a refugee and you're unemployed and that is scary for the landlord, okay? Just don't do it. Be a little bit vague and I will explain to you how to do it properly without lying or deceiving. If you really like a certain rental and there are a lot of people competing for it, and it's still under your budget, you can offer to pay 100 to $200, even $50 per month extra so that the landlord chooses you. So you can say, hey, I'm willing to pay $50 per month extra in addition to the rent, just so you can choose me or 100 or $200 extra. So let's say if it's 1500 per month, you're willing to pay 1700 per month. They might choose you, okay? Because your budget is $2,000 or something like that, you know? It really depends on the landlord. But if you're comfortable doing that, try it, why not? It's very important to be on time for your showing slash viewing appointment. It's also important to dress sharp, dress kind of business casual as if you're going for a job interview. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you do want to stand out. It is important to kind of show up and be present and show your best self and, you know, smile, be pleasant. The more peaceful, appropriate, polite, reliable, trustworthy you look, the better it will be, okay? You just need to put some effort in and then it will make a difference when the landlord is reviewing the applications. The next part is my favorite because it will actually help you create an application that stands out. We will talk about what to write in your application and what not to write. So here's an actual example that I will put on the screen and it is an example from somebody who came from Ukraine and they sent me a message saying they can't find a rental and they asked for help. So I just gave them suggestions on how to improve their initial email and it really helped them and now they have a rental, okay? So this is their initial message. Hello, we are Polina and Sergey from Ukraine. We have no job and have has a spelling mistake, but we're looking, can rent your place now? And I, want you to notice that this is a mistake. It should be, can we rent your place now? But even that, I don't even recommend addressing the landlord like that. So imagine you are the landlord and what would you think of this? And this is an actual email from someone has written to the landlord. And I know you might, you guys may argue like, well, how could you? These are like new immigrants, they don't speak English, but I understand, but they can still go on Google Translate and they can Google Translate it because it takes like one second, right? It Google translated from, from Ukrainian or Russian to English and there you have a proper sentence, right? It just takes a little bit of effort and I want you guys to do it because if you want that rental, you have to do it. You have to put some work into this. 
There are five problems with this text. Let's go over this. There's no information about themselves and there's nothing about their character or their habits, nothing about their job. That's a warning sign for a landlord. Then they're from Ukraine and that's also a warning sign. And many people do not want refugees or new immigrants in their rentals because they think that they're unreliable and they're not financially stable. And yes, that's unethical and even racist to reject people based on their situation or their country of origin, but it happens, right? And we need to understand how to handle this. And then spelling, grammar mistakes, and again, use Google Translate or ask a native English speaker to look over your letter. And then demanding tone, and that's not their fault, they just didn't know it, but you, they're using can instead of could, and there's no please and thank you, they're not really being polite and the landlord already thinks they're being rude. These people basically, they have to understand the Canadian cultural nuances and they need to respect them. And once we follow certain rules and improve this letter, we will definitely make it easier for these people to rent the place. How can we improve this application? Right here on the screen, you can see an updated version of the same letter and let's compare them right now, okay? So it says, hi there, we're interested in renting your property. The location is perfect and the view from the balcony is very nice. We are a professional couple in our late twenties. We would like to find a place to rent for one year or longer. We're responsible, quiet, clean tenants and pay our rent slash bills on time. We don't drink, smoke, party, or do any recreational drugs. We don't have any kids or pets and we're not planning on having them anytime soon. We're fine with providing two months of rent payment in advance. We'd appreciate it if you could please get back to us. We'd like to book a viewing appointment at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your time and consideration. Best regards, Pauline and Sergey. So let's talk about this in more detail. So I'm using hi there and good afternoon, good evening. And I think these greetings are better than hello or hi or dear sir, madam, which is a little outdated, but this is just my personal opinion. You guys can do whatever works for you, but this is just my personal advice. They also made a comment about a rental that's very unique about the property. So they, they made a comment about a view from a balcony. So this is something that's very particular to this property. So it's an excellent thing that they mentioned it. This shows that they didn't just copy and paste their application message, they customize this to this particular rental. Also, they're a professional couple, they want to rent long-term, they describe their character, they don't have any bad habits, they don't have kids or pets, which means less damage or dirt for the landlord. But if you do have kids or pets, that's okay. We'll handle it differently later on. They're willing to pay rent in advance and they're polite and not demanding and they thank the landlord for their time. So that's everything the landlord is looking for, okay? So nothing was mentioned about their job and that can be an issue for the landlord. So the landlord asks them about their job. Are you employed? What's going on with your employment situation? So you can say a couple of things. And again, I don't want you to lie. I just want you to say whatever applies to your particular situation. You can say, we have applied for permanent full-time positions within our desired field and are in the process of waiting for acceptance from the employer, if you truly are waiting for the acceptance. Or you can say, we have applied for permanent full-time positions within our desired field and are in the process of waiting for interviews. We have savings and government assistance. We are refugees from Ukraine and we would have no issues paying your rent on time and in full. Having a stable home is a priority for us. We will treat your home with the same respect we would treat our own home. We appreciate you considering us as potential tenants. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you. So I've also mentioned another version for one single applicant and you can view it on my website. The link is in description. I'm not gonna say it here. I'm just gonna put it up on the screen for you real quick so you can quickly read it yourself. You can pause the video and read it. Basically, this is an example of how to improve your communications with a potential landlord. Yes, you're unemployed. However, you're looking for a job and you are presenting yourself as a reliable, trustworthy individual because you're being honest and you're being very descriptive and you talk about your values. You talk about respecting the place where you will be living and these things matter. This is very important. So if you have kids or if you have a pet or a dog or a cat, you need to mention the weight of a dog in pounds, not kilograms, guys. Use Google and find out what the dog's weight is in 
pounds. Canadians do not know kilograms. We only operate in pounds. And also mention that your dog is very pleasant. So you don't need to mention the age of the dog unless you're being asked directly because nobody really wants a puppy because they pee everywhere. And nobody wants an old dog because they have health problems and other things can happen with older dogs. And I had one, so I know. Don't mention their age unless the landlord is specifically asking for your dog's age. You don't really need to mention it. So you can say, we have a well-behaved, clean, quiet and friendly eight pound Pomeranian dog that will be staying with us in the apartment. If you have a child or a couple of children, you need to mention their ages and their behavior and how you basically need to mention how well behaved they are and how calm they are and that they would be studying in their daycare or they have activities or they have school or preschool because the landlord doesn't really want the kids to be there all the time. You can just mention something like this. We have two children, our son Maxim and our daughter Yulia. So son Maxim, age seven, Yulia, age five. They're wonderful, well-behaved, respectful kids. We raise them with a strong belief that you have to respect the place you're in. They are calm and well-mannered and would be away in daycare, preschool, kindergarten, doing activities most of the time. Guys, I know the way it sounds, but I don't hate kids. I have three of them. I love kids, okay? But you need to present yourself as a non-threatening tenant because the, the moment Leonard hears that you have three children, it's an alarm. Like, oh my God, are they going to destroy my place? You know what I mean? And that's why we need to make sure that the landlord looks at your kids as like, they're wonderful, they're, they're clean, they're quiet, they, they study, they have activities, like they're not a threat. You need to position yourself that you're the best tenant because they will be comparing you with other potential tenants and they may have no kids. They may have zero children. So you have to stand out and make them feel safe. And I know it may be offensive, but I gotta be honest with you guys, it is what it is, okay? We're just trying to make sure you win that rental without lying, but being honest. If your children are crazy and they make a lot of sounds, it can be an issue, guys. So I would definitely not recommend renting second, third, or fourth floor. Rent ground floor and let your children jump around and enjoy themselves and have fun and be loud and do whatever they want. Ground floor is the best for the kids, okay? Because you know what? neighbors below you they will complain and they can be they can be very mean okay they can cause a lot of problems i've experienced that before with my friends and their families and it's tough okay and i feel you guys i have three kids i feel you okay so let's continue the next topic is read and understand your lease there are two types of leases in alberta there's a fixed lease and there's a periodic one i will provide more information about them in my article I will just briefly explain to you what that means. So when you have a fixed lease, which is what the majority of leases are in Alberta, usually they're one year leases. So that means when you sign that lease, you promise to live there for one year. If you need to break this lease, you will have to pay some sort of penalty fee or the landlord will say no, pay me all the rent for the remaining months and then move out. Or you will have to find a replacement tenant. There are different situations. You just need to communicate to the landlord. That's why it can be risky for you. If you know that you're gonna get a new job and move away, then signing a one year lease is not a really good option. If you decide to leave anyway, the landlord can sue you and that can cause you to have a lot of legal problems, financial problems. And I do not recommend leaving without telling anybody. This is a big mistake. Talk to the landlord, communicate, explain the situation, and they might feel sorry for you. And they might actually release you from the lease. You never know. But be aware, when you sign a lease as a legal contract, you promise to stay in this place and rent it out for one year. So if you're breaking the lease, be prepared to pay for the remaining months on the lease. It is very important to read the Tenancy Act. I know that a lot of people do not speak proper English, but you can also Google Translate the pages. Reading the Tenancy Act and reading all the information about how you can end the lease is very, very important. I will put a link to the Tenancy Act below, but again, if you look at my article, you can learn more about the Tenancy Act and what it involves, okay? I'm not gonna mention it here. Also, don't renovate or paint the property without the landlord's consent. Also, the landlord is not allowed to enter the property without 
a 24 hour notice. So they will let you know that they need to enter the property to repair something or to fix something and they have to provide 24 hour notice. And these are the things that you need to look into and they're all written in the Tenancy Act. So I will provide the link in the description. The last thing is you should never, never accept an apartment without a contract. And I'm okay with you guys. If someone's hosting you for free, that's okay. But if you're paying money to somebody and you don't have a contract, you have nothing that protects your rights. So you must sign some sort of rental contract. Do not live somewhere and pay the money without a contract. It's super important to have this lease that actually protects your interests too. The last topic is my favorite. What do you guys do when you found the apartment and you're living there? What are your next steps? The next steps for you would be to start saving money for the down payment, start learning how to buy a house. And I have two articles that will help you. The first one's how to buy a house in Calgary, my top article, very popular read it, it's very useful. And the second one is all about your credit score. So these two articles are very useful. Read them, watch my videos, you will see them on the screen. They will help you prepare yourself for the future because you don't wanna rent forever. You wanna have your own home one day, right? So these articles will help you do that. We've made it to the last topic. And these are some tips on how to search for the rental property on RentFaster. And RentFaster is my favorite rental portal but you know there are many other portals you can use there are links that i provided and you can see them on the screen but let's just talk about rent faster and i love rent faster because it has lots of filters you can search for properties that are short term or long term immediate availability or availability for a certain month if they accept pets or they don't accept pets and you can choose the type of property you want and how many bedrooms how many bathrooms i think it's very very useful but there are a couple of tricks that i will show you the first tip for you guys is that try not to limit too many listings so if you just focus on the price and the type of home you want and then see what shows up because if you start limiting oh i want like four bathrooms or three bathrooms or three bedrooms it's just going to limit a lot of listings because sometimes the input information is not accurate so i would just keep it very generic choose an apartment under 1750 or 2000 and here's everything that shows up and then you can specify what you want you want it furnished or not furnished it means there's furniture in there unfurnished there's no furniture do you have a cat or a dog and basically then you can narrow it down and you can figure out which property works for you so rent faster is also very cool because you can easily figure out if the utilities are included or not so here's an example for you right now on the screen and it shows here that there is a, a two-bedroom condo and it's 1900 dollars per month and the utilities included are heat electricity and water so that means that all the utilities are included. That means that your rent payment is going to be $1,900 plus internet and rental insurance and nothing else. You don't have to pay for the utilities because the landlord is paying for them. That's wonderful. And then another apartment is two bedroom condo, 1950 per month. And utilities here are heat and water. And what does that mean? That means that you have to pay for the electricity because the electricity is not included here. And a lot of people, they do not notice those things. They just think, oh, this is great. 1950 but electricity and internet and rental insurance and that is why i recorded this very very long article and i'm done yes fabulous so this is why we're going through these things because i want you guys to know everything you need to know about this so now i am so proud of you you have completed watching this video and you're prepared to create the best application out there. I am really grateful for your patience. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel and give me some thumbs up. This was a very long video to make. And again, if you have any questions, please send me an email. Please mention your cell phone number. I promise I will not call you, but when I reply to your email, and I will text you, hey, I replied to your email. And if you don't see it, it will most likely be in the junk folder because I am really sad sometimes when I reply to people and they don't see my email and they think I ignored them, but it's actually in the junk folder. So please mention your cell phone number. I promise I won't call you, okay? So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Please subscribe and have a great day. Bye.